Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have an exciting video. I have been looking forward to making this all week and I have absolutely loved receiving all of your submissions for this video. Today I am doing sort of like I'm copying uh, Lennon the Bunny, the accounts video rating her subscribers cages. I really found that video to be interesting. I know nothing about rabbits, uh, but I personally thought the video was super interesting. I liked seeing everyone's setup and what they have for their animal. I thought that that's pretty fascinating and learning what they could do to make it better, what they're doing that's good and bad, etc. So I thought that I would make my own video rating your ferret setups. The point of the video is to give you the submitters suggestions on how they can improve their ferret setups. The point system is pretty arbitrary, uh, so don't focus too much on that. The grades that I give out, it doesn't, they don't really mean too much. Uh, the important thing is the suggestions that I give out. Uh, the point system is just to keep things interesting for everybody. Um, again, don't focus too much on that because I did receive cages that I really liked, but due to the point system, they got lower points than I would have liked, etc. So that's why I wanted to say that in the beginning of the video. So here is the point system. We have enrichment is four points. So this is pretty vague because not many people have a lot of enrichment in their cage setup. So that's why if they were submitting a cage, I went on their account to see what other enrichment activities that they provide when the ferret's out of the cage and rate based on that. Uh, so that's four points. Food and water bowls is one point, so I'm going to give you a point if you have bowls and not just bottles. If you have both bowls and bottles, I'm pretty lenient with that. But if you just have bottles, I'm not going to give you that point. So free roam time is the biggest thing and biggest area that you can get points. That's six points. So I'm aiming for six to eight hours plus is perfection. Um, five, I can allow that as well. Four hours is the universal minimum, so if you are not hitting the four hours, you will not be getting a lot of points for that, and so your overall grade will be hurt because in my opinion, and it's not just an opinion, I feel like it's a fact, free roaming time, giving free roam time to your ferret is one of the most important things that you can do for maximum health and well-being for your ferret is to let them out of the cage. They are not caged animals. They are not rats or hamsters. Think of them more like a dog where you would crate. Some people crate their dog when they go out uh, to work or to school or overnight. That's what I would like ferrets to be seen more as rather than a hamster that they can keep in a cage for the majority of the day. So I'm going to be cracking down on this one and I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings but if I feel like you're not providing enough free roam time I'm, go I'm going to tell you and I don't want you to take offense from it at all. Everyone is capable of making more time for their animals. I mean if you're only doing like two hours a day you can definitely provide more time than two hours out of the cage. You're you're home for more than two hours in a day, um, most of the time. <laughs> I'm sure there are situations. I'm going to be cracking down on that. The other points that you can get, bathroom zones, so if you have a really nice spacious litter box, I'm going to give you a point for that. If you use like corner boxes, I probably won't give you the full point because I'll talk more about why later. Um, overnight safety is a big one that's two points so if you have a bunch of toys in your cage and you have them caged overnight I might not give you the full points because as we all know ferrets are extremely susceptible to blockages. Even if your ferret has never chewed on anything in its entire life one day you could wake up and the stuffed bear you have in there or the rubber toy in there is chewed up and even the tiniest 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 little piece can get stuck in there and can cause problems. Problems. So I think it's really important to not have toys in your cage and I love seeing cages that don't have toys in it. I know it makes the cage look not as fun and exciting for the ferret but trust me ferrets do not need a lot in their cage to be happy. They need blankets, bedding, a spacious litter box, bowls. That's really all they need. They don't need squeaky toys in there. They don't need balls or anything like that. I like to save those things for supervised playtimes only even if your ferret is really trustworthy and I hope that makes sense. Um, the last the last point you could get is just an etc point, so let's say if you created the cage yourself, like you made it yourself, I'm going to give you a point because 
that deserves a point in itself for creativity and spent the time that you spent making that. So our first setup is by an individual named Dana. She sent me an email. She has six ferrets in a Critter Nation cage. Uh, they range from two years to three months. They have free range of my room when I'm in it. Um, so she also mentions in the cage she has a larger cat litter box on the bottom but it's hidden by the banana hammock um, they do also have a corner box because Zazu will only use that one he is a brat and is very picky I find that pretty interesting but I'm not gonna you know not give you points because of that I think you do what you have to do when it comes to litter pans. I mean, it's not going to kill your ferret to use a corner box. They just tend to be a little on the smaller side, and some ferrets get annoyed after a while, and then they'll start pooping outside of the litter box. They also get five to six hours of playtime daily, which is great. Uh, so now let's take a look at this setup here. She's got this whole room for her ferrets. It looks great. She's got tubes, tunnels, toys. She has a little ladder up to her bed, which is super cute. She definitely gets the full four points for enrichment. She's got so much stuff for them in here. Um, she's really, you can tell that she's put effort into really transforming her room to be a ferret room. She's got clip-on Crocs, no water bottles, which is great, so she gets the full point there. She gives sufficient free roam time, five to six hours, deserves the full points. Uh, moving on, she's got a large litter box that's not, you can't see in the picture, but she states is behind the banana hammock, um, so that's a full point. The only thing I do not give her a full point for is the rubber toy that she has in her cage. I work with dogs every single day of my life pretty much and the pink toy is a Kong puppy teething stick. I recognized it right away. Now this is a rubber toy so it's a hazard for ferrets. Now I would just recommend not leaving it in the cage overnight with them. Patsu loves rubber and I thought that if I just supervised him with a rubber toy it would be fine because you know he he loves the rubber toys i wanted him to be happy i was new to ferret owning i just wanted him to be happy now i gave him this toy i forgot about it i look back and there are chunks missing out of this rubber toy now i don't think he swallowed it I think he might have swallowed a tiny bit, but even a small, small, tiny, tiny bit can be enough to set your ferret off into a vomiting episode or you have to get emergency surgery. It's just not worth the risk. And I find that most times ferrets don't even play with toys in their cage. Like I mentioned before, they tend to prefer, prefer just simple setups with their necessities. The other thing I wanna mention, but I didn't take off points or anything, is the cat tower in the room. I want to, I mean, I trust Dana because she's in here supervising them when they're out. But just to the general viewers out there watching this, be careful with cat towers with ferrets. They can be really, really high. Now, for cats, it's fine because, you know, they always land on their feet, whatever. They can jump up on high places. But ferrets, they are much more fragile than cats are. So, and they're very clumsy. So they can climb up to the top of the cat tower, they can, you know, get into one of their crazy itching fits and fall off. And unfortunately, there have been ferrets that have fallen off from like even just the top of the couch and have gotten internal bleeding from it. They fell just in the right spot. So you really have to be careful with cat towers. I find that they are just too tall. Just wanted to point that out there. but. You seem to know what you're doing. You supervise them, so I don't think it's a big problem. Appa, why are you doing this every single time I film a video? It's really annoying. <laughs> Please ignore that. So she gets a 14.5 out of 15 points for creativity and effort, and that is an A. So the only thing, again, is just the rubber toy. That's really all I have to suggest to you. Doing good so far. Starting off strong. Thanks, Dana. All right, so the second submission is from my friend Amanda at Pets Galore Studio. She says that they have maybe six to eight hours a day and almost all day on weekends, which is perfect. It's an all living things, small animal cage, exactly the same as the Critter Nation. It is absolutely beautiful right off the bat. It's a cozy cage, so I gave her an et cetera point for that. I think it's just beautiful and I might be biased because I love, I love monochromatic cage setups. I just, it's simple. Appa. Oh my god! Appa! He just took the duct tape off of his mouth and now it's stuck. Naughty ferret. Pictured here is the naughtiest of boys. Anyways, she does great free roam time so that gets the full six points. It's simple, which is 
awesome. It's always tempting to crowd a cage with toys and other things that they don't need, as I've mentioned before. There are no toys or anything dangerous in this cage, so she definitely gets the full two points for overnight safety. She's got water and food dishes. She does have a bottle, but the ferrets have the option of using a bowl, so I don't have a problem with that. She also has a perfect litter box. It's large. She's got pellets in it. You have to be kidding me. Why? They were fine all day until I actually had to film a video. Please stop. I know that she gives them a bunch of enrichment. Um, you can tell by her account that they are always playing. She's got dig boxes, all that great stuff for her ferrets, so she gets that as well. So she gets a perfect score, um, an A. So nice job, Amanda. Her account is truly inspiring for fuzzy owners. She's always changing up her setup and it is super inspiring to me to keep changing things up for my ferrets. Not that it really matters to them, but it makes me feel better that their space is clean and simple. So the next one is by the Ferret 5. This user has five ferrets and they have their own room with the cages left open and they get up to four hours out of their room. So. This picture looks awesome. She's got double ferret. She's got double double ferret nation setups for five, which is awesome. Now the general rule, which not many people follow, but some do, is the they recommend two ferrets per unit. So, um, like if you have a double ferret nation, max ferrets you can have there. Um, in there, according to, I don't even know, I think it's the cage manufacturer. I don't even remember where I heard this. Is uh, four ferrets max in a double ferret nation. So it's nice that she's got two doubles for five ferrets. I think that that's great. Um, and they're open all the time, so it doesn't really matter. Got a lot of enrichment, you can tell by her account. She's got a lot of toys for them. She also has clip-on Crocs, which is great. If they're allowed the space all the time, there are a bunch of things like stuffies attached to the cage and stuff that I personally would remove just for the safety hazard. Now, of course, that one is, was really, really hard to grade because all ferrets are different and obviously not all ferrets are destructive. My four are not destructive. However, I still don't give them rubber or stuffed toys unsupervised for this reason. If you, just, you just never know. You never know. Um, but anyways, she also does the bare minimum of free roam time. Now, I want to comment on she's got this beautiful room for her ferrets and the cages are left open all the time for them. Now, this, if she, if this was just the free room area, like this room, it would definitely be too small. Um, this is a closet. So um, I like that while they are caged, they get this whole room to themselves. That's great. And then for four hours out of the room. Now that is the bare minimum. Again, I always recommend to shoot for six to eight and more with I, the ideal being complete free room or just caged overnight or when you're not home. I think that that is the best, so I'm not going to give her the full points only because there are people that do more that have submitted and I wanted to give them um, most most of the credit. So she, I gave her four and a half points because their cage is a closet sized room, so that's pretty impressive and good. So with my arbitrary point system, it's 12 and a half out of 15, but I think it deserves a 14 out of 15, so that's an A. Um, I curve a lot of these so, because I just, I don't think, I don't think it's fair. So, and again, it doesn't matter, but that's all. That's all I would say. So, Okay, so our next setup was by Lynn. They have a room for them with a cage made from Ikea furniture that is always open. <clears throat> she lets them free roam in the house anytime she's home and awake, which is about six plus hours per day. So this is her cage setup super unique. I've never seen anything like this. She has built a cage out of Ikea furniture, um, so that's pretty cool. She's got like a covering for it. Apparently she leaves it open all the time for this room for them, and then she lets them free roam outside, which is great. So she gives complete free roam pretty much, so that's a full six points. And I gave her an extra point for just having a DIY cage. That's super cool. I love that you put the effort in there for your ferrets. She's got food and water dishes I see in there, so that's great. And then she looks like she's got a normal cat litter box as well. Um, so let's, some suggestions uh, that I have here. I would remove the cat tower from this room. It is extremely tall, as you can see, so you can really visualize what I mean by if they climb to the top and fall down, that could be a big injury. They could break a leg, 
they are so fragile. And when I say that they can break a leg from falling, you know, even just from the top of the couch, believe me, it's happened before, and you just really gotta be careful. In some pictures, I don't see the cat tower, and in some I do, so I'm not sure what she has for them currently. I just recommend to keep the ferret tower, or the cat tower, out of the unsupervised zone. That's the only thing that I have to say, so I gave her one point for overnight um, safety, and I would suggest more enrichment here. I don't know what you have in the rest of your house for them, but I would suggest getting one of those, like what, what we saw with Dana's submission, um, one of those tighter tubes. Now that, the one that she has is the Marshall's uh, throughway. So I really recommend, I actually have it up here because they were using this during my video. I have a tube from the hardware store. I recommend getting one of these bad boys. These, your ferrets will thank you for the rest of your life if you give them one of these. I also recommend getting a dig box, but I recently introduced it again and my ferrets really love the dig box right now. We use non-instant rice in there and they just love rolling around. It helps control their oil production. Um, so she gets 12 out of 15 points, but a bonus point for complete free roam. That's an A in my book. Next submission is by Ferret and Cat Mama. She has the Furplast Ferret Tower. This is the first submission where we've seen the Furplast. It's also a very popular cage. She lets them free roam about two to four hours a day. It depends, and she has two ferrets in this cage. It's got a lot of bedding in here. Uh, hammocks and hides. The amount of stuff you have in the cage is great. You get the full four points. I love the strawberry bed back there. I really want to get one of those. It's so cute. She's got a decent sized litter pan and it looks like she uses wood pellets too. That's great. It has clip-on bowls instead of bottles. She also doesn't have, as I, that I can see anyways, any dangerous toys or any toys at all in the cage, so that's great. Big thing that I have to say about this is you are not providing enough free roam time for your ferret. Two to four hours a day is not enough time for ferrets to be out of the cage and I'll tell you why. You'll notice when you have your ferrets free roam, they probably are only up and about for like 20 minutes and then they sleep for like two hours. So that's why it's so important to give the maximum amount of time that you can provide so that they can really take advantage of that time outside and romp and play and have fun and be a ferret and stretch their legs, exercise their joints and whatnot. Because if you only do two hours, it's just not enough time. The universal minimum is four hours. Again, I've been challenging that minimum number to six to eight plus hours because I think that in order to have the healthiest and happiest ferrets that you can, providing the most is so crucial, and I want to get that into your guys' heads. I don't think that this cage deserved the low amount of points that it got in the end, but because free roaming is such an important part of my system, I don't think it deserves a low grade because everything else is perfect. Next submission is by Corey, and uh, Corey says that he gets about two hours on days I am super busy, but normally he gets three to four depending on what's going on that day. The setup is for one ferret, although she is planning on getting a second at some point. Um, so here are the pictures for this setup. Pretty creative. She's got like a DIY sort of playpen. It looks like that she uses this whole setup as the cage, which is great because if she were to just use this cage, a lot of people use this this cage. I can't remember the name of it, but I do not like this cage. I think that it is so small. Um, so if she were to not use this whole like it, if she was using that cage as the cage and the setup as the free roam time, that is just not not good but it looks like she uses the whole setup. I should have asked her to specify, but it looks like she uses the whole area as the cage, so that's good. I'm gonna give her a etc. point for this because I think it's pretty creative that she made this playpen for him, and she obviously put an effort. I do see a regular bowl in the cage, so I'll give her a point. She's got a large litter box, so that's great, and her overnight safety is pretty good. She doesn't really have any you know, hazardous things in this cage. I have a couple suggestions for you um, to really improve your setup. The first being, again, this is not enough free roam time. You have to be hitting the four hours. This is non-negotiable. It has to be at least four hours. for pro That is proper ferret care is at least four hours every single day. Trust me, it's not super hard. You just have to plan out your days ahead of time. Be like, okay, I'm gonna dedicate this much time to doing this hobby, this much time to doing homework. You only have one ferret, so this is even 
more crucial. When you have one ferret, you have to dedicate much more time to it because it doesn't have a playmate. It doesn't have anyone to be with when you're away. So all that time, it's alone, and it's just, it's not good for a ferret. They're very social animals. They need a companion. I'm going to give you a point and a half for the free roam time, only because it's so crucial and you only have the one ferret. I didn't, you know, take any points away or anything for this, but hamster bedding is so hard to deal with with ferrets. It just gets all over the floor. It's just a mess and I hate it. It's it's messy. It doesn't do a good job of soaking up all their pee. So I really recommend that you remove the hamster bedding and instead put recycled pellet litter. I use Yesterday's News by Purina. It has made a world of a difference for me. I would say to cozy up the cage, make it a safe space like the green cage in the corner. I mean, add a hide, hammocks, bedding, replace the loose bedding again um, with plush blankets if he doesn't go to the bathroom in there. This way you can remove one or both of the hides that you have, um, like the, the little cup bed and then the, it looks like you have a carrier in there. I would remove those and instead just make the cage super cozy for him um, because then, you just jumped in the dig box, <laughs> because then he gets even more space to run around. So that really opens up that space. I would change up the enrichment. I like that you recycle by using the boxes and cat toys. I've done that before in the past. I would add a long flexible tube again, or a small dig box of rice or beans, but only give them the, him the dig box during supervised play times. Um, you can actually use the box that you have as a dig box. I would cut a hole in the side and then connect one of those thin tubes into it. That would be a lot of fun for your ferret. So it's about 9 out of 15, but I curve it so you get about a C. Um, I think it's fair for this setup. Now, again, do not be too torn up about the grades. They really don't mean anything. It's more about the suggestions. It's just, I wanted to do the point system to make the video interesting, and now I regret it. But anyways, moving on. So, nice job, Corey. You are on the right track. Next, we have a cage by Bailey. He, she says that she aims to let them roam and play outside the cage for about four-ish hours a day. We have a tunnel toys, squeaky toys, rubber dog toys, dig box, other hammocks hung on shelves, and they play on the cat tower as well. Additionally, the cage is a ferret nation. The two bowls near the litter box serve no purpose except to keep them from pooping in that corner. That's smart. Beautiful cage. Um, she definitely gets the etc. point. I think it's simple. It doesn't have really too much of the ferret doesn't need aside from the stuffy toy. Um, she, I like that she uses the recycled litter, so she uses the newspaper as litter. I've done that before in the past, and I would continue to do that if I was still sent newspaper and if they didn't just move the crap all over the place. She gets a point for that. She gets a point for having clip-on crocs and bowls, and her enrichment definitely a four because she says she's got tunnels and toys. Now, the only thing is you are at the right amount of free roam time. You are at the bare minimum. I would of course shoot for more than this for reasons I've mentioned many times before, so I won't give you the full points. It'll be three and a half points. Um, you mentioned you give them rubber toys, so I would definitely not do that. It is such a hazard again. I've explained that before. But other than that, it's a great setup. I don't have too much bad to say about it, so it, with my curve it comes out to be about 12 and a half out of 15, so that's a B. So nice job. So next we've got two little carpet sharks. They get nine to 10 hours of free roaming a day and that's the most that we've seen so far. And I really, really, I wanna say, I appreciate what you do for your ferrets. It is awesome that you are able to offer nine to 10 hours every day. I'm sure you've noticed the difference in your ferrets from allowing so much free roam time. Definitely full points for having free roam time there. She's got a beautiful and cozy cage again. Love the monochromatic colors. I know I'm just biased, um, but she gets a point for that. I, also, I'm not sure what kind of cage this is. I should have asked, but um, if I find out, I will add it in the video. But anyways, she's got no toys in the cage, so that's great. Um, no, no hazards. She also has a large litter pan with pellet litter in the back there. That's great. And enrichment, from what I've seen on their account, they get to go out and play outside often. They have toys and stuff, so definitely she gets all the points for that. And I really don't have any suggestions for this cage. I think it's perfect the way that it is but that's a perfect score. Next submission, we are on the ninth one, is Raquel. Uh, she has two ferrets, both female, and they are five months old. I allow at least two hours of free roam daily when I have school more on the weekend. So she's got a DIY cage, again, very interesting. Um, so she gets an extra point for that. She's got food bowls, which is great. 
and it's a pretty cozy cage lots of hammocks and fun for them so that's four points uh, for enrichment this is not nearly enough for your roam time again uh, you aren't even hitting the minimum of four hours two hours is not enough for your ferret please 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 shoot for more i'm so sad to be seeing so many people not even hitting the minimum here and I'm not saying that this is a reflection on your, you know, pet parenting skills at all. I know that you have all the best intentions and you're trying your best. Once you get home from school, you have quite a few hours until you have to go to bed. So whenever you're home, just make sure that your ferrets are out of the cage. She's got corner boxes. Uh, these, as I've mentioned before, they're too small. Now for her five month old ferrets, they may be okay, but usually ferrets usually max out in size starting at about six months. So you're gonna have to upgrade those at some point. This doesn't affect your score or anything at all. I noticed that you have the pink and gray stuffed snake toy. I'm very familiar with this toy. This toy almost caused a blockage with my uh, ferret Patsu. Uh, when he was a baby, he chewed the tail end of, it's like a stuffed snake. and It's got a ball. Um, he chewed the, the end of it and some of the stuffing came out and he swallowed a little bit of the stuffing. Thankfully he passed it, but just so you're aware, I would probably take that snake toy out. I'm not saying that your ferrets are going to do the same thing, but you honestly never know. Patsu is not destructive in the slightest, so that was very surprising for me that he did that, but again, you never know with ferrets. She gets about 10 out of 15. I mean, it looks beautiful, it's very creative, I'm very impressed by what you've done here. But again, just keep that in mind. It is so important that you provide that free roam time. All right, we are almost at the end here. We have Brooke's cage. She has a double ferret nation times two for three babies. So that's awesome. That's more than enough space in a cage. They get about two to four hours of free roam time around the apartment when I'm home during the day and evening. They get about six hours on weekends. The great things about this is she's got a giant cage. So that's a point right there. She has great enrichment. She's got, if you can see, like a dog crate in the corner with a bunch of balls. I would love to do this. She has a large litter box. She's got multiple large litter boxes and she doesn't really have any dangerous toys in here that I can see. Um, she's got some things clipped to the cage but it looks like they may be hard plastic. I don't have a problem with hard plastic. Unfortunately, I'll have to say that the amount of free roam time you give during the week is pretty tight. And I do see that you have multiple water bottles in this cage. If I haven't already inserted the picture of uh, what can happen to a ferret with water bottles, I'll put it in again. They just don't provide enough water and they can chip your ferret's teeth. So if your ferrets are chronic diggers, do the clip on Crocs, put them up a little bit higher than normal. You get about a 12 out of 15, but I really love this setup. I think it deserves more than that. It's just the arbitrary point system. So lastly, we have Libby's cage. Uh, she has four ferrets and a double ferret nation, so that's good. I have the same thing. <laughs> she allows five hours free roam time daily, which is good. Um, so she does great free roam time. She's almost hitting what I recommend, but I mean five to six, you know, it's not a huge difference. Um, so she has clip-on bowls. That's great. She's got perfect size litter boxes, so she's got no toys in here, and that's great. And um, you can tell on her account that she provides a lot of enrichment for her ferret, so she gets all those points. And the cage is super cozy, so I gave her an even extra point. So she gets the full score. I love this setup. I love the liners. I think they are so cute. I love the little hides that she has and the hammock. And the bowls are super cute, and they match the liner. It's just so nice to look at and so simple and safe, and I love it. That is all of my submissions for today. I had so much fun making this video. Thank Thank you for almost giving me 2,000 subscribers on my account. That is awesome. I am so, so excited. And I just never thought that these videos would be as popular as they've gotten. I never thought that I would have a following <laughs> doing what I love like this. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.